us. He's here to help us. He's here, here to Glory instruct to us, to, to correct God. us. Glory. He's here. Hallelujah. Let's sing our next song, Waymaker. Ooh. 
my God, that is who you are. That's who you are, that's who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That's who you are, that's who you are, that's who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, Light in the darkness, my God, that is who All right. you are. We're going to pray that she gets some courage. Oh, way maker. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you last are. Last time, last time. Come on, real big. Way maker, miracle goodness. Has he ever kept a promise? Has he ever opened up a door? Has he ever had to shut a door? Close a door? Oh yes, rearranging things, putting things in alignment for your good, working for your good. He is a Way maker, miracle worker. Do you know him as a miracle worker? Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. My husband needs a miracle right now. Way maker, miracle worker. You are the miracle worker, Lord. Promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You wipe away, you wipe away all tears. You mend the broken heart. You're the answer to it all. Jesus, you wipe away all tears. Thank you, Lord. You mend the broken heart. You're the answer to it all. Jesus. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. We look to the hills, hallelujah, from whence cometh our help. Our help comes from you, Lord. Thank you, God. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, let's give him some praise. A clap and a praise, a clap and a praise. We want to welcome each of you today. I know the Lord is here. We want to greet each other this morning. Greet the fathers. Greet them with a happy Father's Day. I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad you're here today. May God's blessings come your way. May you feel his warmth. As we worship in this place, no matter what you're going through, God is here for you. So believe me when I say, may God's blessings be. for you. 
Our pastor. Amen. I got a song. I got a song. Yeah. All right. All right. Put me in C sharp. <laughs> Glory. Amen. This is our song unto our Heavenly Father. Our Father, you are holy. We give you glory and we bless your name. Glory and we bless your name. 
gave us. By your power you saved us. We give you glory and we bless your name. Where we are you brought us. What we know you taught us. We give you glory and we bless your name. Our Father, our Father, you are holy. unto the Lord. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? If our God would mark iniquity, who could stand? But for his grace, for his mercy, for his kindness, for his long suffering, for his faithfulness, for his salvation, for his power, for his love, for the victory that is only found in him. We give him glory. We give him honor. We give him praise. We give him reverence. Because he's excellent. He's wonderful. He's marvelous. Fantastic. Phenomenal. Sensational. Amazing. A mighty God is he. He's a mighty God. And we bless his name. We extol his name. We lift up his name. We exalt his name. His name is above every name. His name is a strong tower. And the righteous can run into it. And they are made safe. There is no salvation in any other name except the name of Jesus. His name. Demons tremble at the sound of his name. At the mention of our great God and his name. Healings in his name. Restoration is in his name. Power is in his name. Everlasting life is in his name. Strength is in his name. Might is in his name. Excellence is in his name. Glory, glory, benevolence, provision, protection, direction, leading and guidance is in his name. I will bless his name. I will magnify his name. I will extol his name. Glory. And he's our father. What a wonderful thing to claim. He's our father. Glory. 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 He said, I would not leave you as orphans. I will come unto you. He sent back the precious gift of the Holy Ghost uh, so we don't have to be orphans. Uh, we don't have to walk this world or walk this journey without a father. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 I love the Lord. I love the Lord. He's been good to me. He's been good to me. God's been good to me. He's been good. Better than what I deserve. Better than what I can ever earn. God has been good to me. And I believe that's the sentiments of us in this room. God has been so good to us. If God was to really give us what we deserve, this would be an empty house today. This would be an empty house if God really was to give us what we really earned and what our actions earned, what some of the thoughts of our hearts earned, if God was to really pay us for that. This would be a silent place. 
but because his love and his mercy endures forever, while I have my being, I will praise God. I will bless God for his manifold blessings in all of our lives. Amen. So magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. He's the father of lights. Scripture says every good and perfect gift cometh down from above, from the father of lights, in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow or turning. That means God doesn't think one thing one day about you and think something the other thing another day about you. There's no shadow of turning with our God. God needs to be praised for that alone because some days we miss the mark. Some days we fall short, but God's love is there. Amen. I just wanted to take a moment to extol our God. Amen. 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 This is the day the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We're thankful to the Lord for the gift of this day and the new mercies that he's loaded in this day. Amen. Thank God for his consistent faithfulness. We're thankful to see everyone and appreciate everyone being here this morning. I want to say happy Father's Day to all of our fathers, all of our brothers, those that are here and those that are watching by live stream. I want to say happy Father's Day to you. Um, I want to thank the Sunday School Department, and in particular, I want to thank our administrator and youth pastor, Pastor Tracy Willis, for the wonderful program for this morning. Amen. Started off with a nice breakfast. Amen. Breakfast was delicious, and the fellowship was very, very good, and then we had a wonderful program, a wonderful Father's Day program after the breakfast, and I'm sure all the brothers who were here can join me in this singular sentiment, it was a wonderful time. Amen? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. If you're worshiping with us for the very first time and you did not receive a welcome packet, if you would raise your hands, our sanctuary support team will ensure that you receive a welcome packet. If you're in the sanctuary and you need a uh, bulletin, raise your hands and we will ensure that you receive a bulletin. All right. Briefly, our announcements, uh, the $10 council dues are due next Sunday, so you can use your regular contribution envelope and write CCDC on the bottom of our envelopes. And just as a reminder, we are hosting, uh, Lord willing, next month in July, we are hosting the Central California District Council. So that means Tuesday through Friday, we will be hosting the council, the week of the council, all right? All right, so that means we need to be here and we need to be on point, amen? All right, Generation Next will be serving food to the homeless at Union Rescue Mission this coming Saturday. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen, that was the mission that I migrated through when I first came to LA. Amen, Union Rescue, I used to work in the kitchen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God for the Union Rescue Mission. Ages 15 and up are invited to help. See Pastor Tracy by this Wednesday to sign up. All right. Now, on the first Sunday of July, Lord willing, the first Sunday of July will be July 2nd. That's the calendar date. And on that date, we're having a dress down Sunday. Dress down Sunday. The reason that we're having a dress down Sunday is after service, we're going to need the help of as many brothers as possible to take these chairs out of the sanctuary and put them in our undeveloped area and also uh, the tables and chairs that are in our vestibule, put them in the undeveloped area because we're having the carpet cleaners come to clean the carpet. Amen. Amen. So, so we need our brothers. Amen. We need our brothers. Amen. We, we, we want the brothers to do the majority of the work. I know we have sisters that are willing to help, but we want our brothers to, to get the lion's share. 
let, should I let that marinate or can we move forward? A a amen. So, so bring brothers, if you got some brothers that are willing to help, you can bring them to church that Sunday. Tell them it's dressed down. They don't even have to wear a suit. Amen? Amen. And, and as many as we have, that would make the burden lighter on everybody. All right? All right. My, my sciatica would not allow me to participate. What do you say, Mom? Yeah, she's, Mom said, she know I hate that. Amen. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do my part. I'll be the heralder. Amen. And so I'm trying to recruit. Amen. 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 Because if, if you ever had sciatica or you're dealing with it, you know it's, it's not a joke. Amen. So you don't want to do things to aggravate it because it can act up at any time. So you don't want to provoke it. So I'm not going to provoke my sciatica. Amen? Amen. All right. Now we want you to know that after dismissal, all brothers, please pick up your Father's Day gifts at the welcome call. So after we dismiss brothers, we have gifts for you. All right? All right. Um, we are looking at our weekly goal for the week ending June 11th, and we achieved 75% of our weekly goal. Right. Okay. We praise God for the 75 percent. Amen. Amen. We going. What are we gonna do? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We gonna bounce back. Amen. Um, also, this is the Sunday that we ask those that will to bring your Father's Day monetary gifts for our senior assistant pastor, Elder Charles Talbert. Amen. So my wife and I, we've come prepared and we brought our card and monetary gift as well as our tithing and our offering. Amen. So we, we're going to give our tithing and our offering and we're going to give our love gifts to our senior assistant pastor for Father's Day. And once we collect them all, we will FedEx them to him. Amen. So just in case you wonder how you're going to get, we're going to FedEx it. Amen. And he will receive our Father's Day love. I believe, I believe, um, uh, and uh, Elder Wainwright, uh, you, can, you can help me. But it was last week when they were, they, they wanted to do the, uh, you need to make a correction? All right. Okay. All right. There was a there was a procedure that the doctors thought that they were going to have to do uh, for Elder Talbert, but because of the prayers of the saints, uh, the procedure was not as intense as the physicians had previously stated. Some of the work had already been been done, and they didn't have to impact the bone in the manner which the doctors thought. At first, they would have to impact it. So we thank God for that. That's a praise report. That's a praise report. Amen. So we continue to pray and lift up uh, Elder Talbert. We continue, and his wife, Sister Talbert, we continue to pray and lift up Brother Eric Norville. Amen. Amen. God, amen. God's on the move, and God can do whatever he wants to do. Amen. He's that kind of God, and he's faithful. We lift up and continue to pray. For Mother McNeil, amen. Sister Dolores Jackson, amen. Uh, Brother Tim Pope Jr., amen. Lift those, those are the critical ones that come up in my mind, amen. And all those that you know about that may not come across my mind, but they're in God's mind and your mind, lift them up in prayer. Continue to pray for Brother John Pegg, who's here working at his station, amen. We thank God for that, amen, amen. Prayer works, amen, amen. 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 So uh, if you're going to give this morning, if you're going to give this morning your tithing or your offering by way of check, please make your check payable to Home Assembly Church. Home Assembly Church, if you're giving by 
uh, way of credit card or debit card. If you exit those double doors, turn to your left, or exit these doors, turn to your right. Someone will be there at the media center, the welcome center, uh, to receive your gifts. As is our custom, those who are willing and able, if you wouldn't mind standing with us this morning and uh, hold your gift that you're going to give to the Lord in one hand. And on the back of our church bulletin, we have our church unity prayer. Reading this prayer, we're asking God's continued blessings on what we're giving back to him. All right? Let us begin. For this cause we bow our knees unto you, our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that you would grant us according to the riches of your glory, that our church be strengthened with might by your spirit in our inner man, that you, Christ, would dwell in our hearts by faith, that we, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and that we would know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that we might be filled with all the goodness of God. Now unto you, who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, Unto you be glory in this church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. For this cause also we do not cease to pray for our church and desire that we might be filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that we might walk worthy of you, Lord, unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of you. Strengthen with all might according to your glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto you, Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into your kingdom, Jesus. For it is in you we have redemption through your blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Furthermore, because the promises of God are true and our latter will be greater than our past. In unity, we declare that our church property will be 100% completed in God's perfect time and will be within budget according to his perfect will. In unity, we declare that our church will be a beacon in the community to draw souls to Christ and that our hearts will be ready and open to welcome all allowing God to get all the glory, for it is he that hath made it so. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'd be so kind as to follow the directions of our sanctuary support team from the rear. Thank you.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Lord. Our last song today is Jesus is the best thing. Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Let's pray for Brother Mark. He'll be leading this song. of life's ups and downs God has been good to me
Welcome our pastor. Jesus is the best thing that ever happened. Jesus is the best thing. Same pastor. A lot of things have happened to me, <laughs> but by far, Jesus, the best thing. Mm. Jesus is still the best thing that has ever happened to me. Jesus Christ, my Lord, and my Savior. God, you formed me out of clay, and for your glory I was made. Use this vessel and this moment as you choose, Lord, and let my life, let it praise you. Speak to our hearts. Give us ears to hear what your spirit has to say to the church and hearts to obey. Bring thoughts to our mind and clarity of speech so that your name will be glorified and your people edified. We thank you for this now. Let flesh be silent. Speak by your spirit. It's our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, I want to say happy Father's Day to all of our fathers. Amen. Um, also, I want to mention that uh, as a congregation, remember to lift up Sister Martha Balmer in prayer. She's going through some physical challenges. Amen. And also, I want, I want to mention to continue to pray for our brother, Brother Leslie Henderson and his wife. Amen. Amen. Uh, one of the things, you know, sometimes there's certain things that stand out in your mind about your brothers and sisters uh, in the Lord. And I feel so blessed to, to be a part of this local congregation. And one of the things that, that uh, the Lord impressed me about our dear brother, Brother Henderson, he handles things with grace. Um, he, he handles things with grace. You would never know the impact or the, the volume or the severity of what he's going through because he's such a gracious man, him and his wife. And God just impressed that thought in my heart while I was there a moment ago. And I, I just wanted to share that. I'm so grateful to be in the company of such godly people. Amen. Amen. They, they, you all, in, in different aspects, you all, you all display the attributes and the character of God. And I'm, I'm just happy to be a part of this congregation. I want y'all to know that. And brother and sister Henderson, I salute you for your graciousness. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Um, I'm cheering up, but that's okay. <laughs> Amen. I want to talk about a father's blessing. 
I want to talk about a father's blessing. I guess it's Father's Day, so that might be apropos. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about a father's blessing. When we think of the word father, there are certain words that come to our minds. And a lot of it has to do with our experience with our natural fathers. Um, there, there, there are several words that come to our minds. And I've, I've said this before, and I believe it bears mentioning again. If you children, no matter what your age, whether you're, you're minor children and, or you, you are adult children, if you have been blessed, to come up in a household with godly parents, godly mother and father, you don't know how blessed you are. And the ramifications of the blessings maybe have not even been manifested fully in your life. But you don't know what a blessing it is to have godly parents. Please don't take that for granted. Please don't, please don't take that lightly. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, some of the words that came to my mind as I was uh, preparing for just to share my heart today. When you think of father, you think of protector. When you think of father, you think of provider. When you think of father, you think of nourisher. When you think of father, you think of upholder. Just, these are just a few words that came to my mind. And throughout human history in ancient times as well as biblical times, children sought the blessing of their fathers. Children sought for the the blessings that would come from their father and in biblical times we we know through reading the account of scripture that the eldest son receives a double blessing from the father and god uh, god uh, has instituted fatherhood and god gives instructions for how men aren't supposed to father their children. And when we follow the instructions of God, we receive the promises that God has promised to us. When we are fathers and godly fathers and we, when we are priests of our homes, when we are leaders uh, of our families, there's, there's blessings that go along with it. And uh, uh, most of our children want to emulate, especially our sons, want to emulate their fathers. And oftentimes, even our daughters will want to emulate the fathers. Oftentimes, or it, it may have been in days gone by, that our daughters sought mates that emulated the character of their fathers. Uh, but it's sad to say that that has shifted. That has shifted uh, because it is no more, as, as far as I can see, it is no more the standard of a double parent home. I'm, I'm going to talk about some things that may be a little uncomfortable, but we got to deal with it. Amen. Uh, it is, it is the, it is, it used to be that people were married before they had babies. That was the foundation of the family. Uh, that was God's institution of family. And that, that, and we held that in high esteem. But through the process of time, Evil men and seducers waxing worse and worse and sin uh, encroaching even in the hearts 
and minds of the human condition that shifted. And then society at large became more open, more open and accepting of single parent family. And to coin a phrase, baby daddy and baby mama stuff. That was not in God's original plan. Uh, the church is the pillar and ground of truth. So we still have to proclaim what God instituted and what God ordained. All right, I think I'll take my time. If we don't herald it, who's going to declare it? We cannot be afraid of popular opinion. We cannot be afraid of, of perceptions from one camp or another camp. We cannot fall into the trap of blending in or going along just to get along. God's word is true. And just let me say, we will have challenges even when we operated God's way. So why add unnecessary challenges when we go against God's law and then expect for it to work out? I'm just laying a foundation. You're still going to get a blessing, but I'm laying a foundation. Huh? Because I'm going to lay this foundation so we can appreciate the blessing. All right? We got to be open and we got to be honest. All right? So children from early Bible times and even ancient times sought the blessings of their fathers. We, we, when we, when we do well in school, we want to bring that report home. Or when we accomplish something, you know, when we can finally cut the yard without the help of dad and we can do it like dad said, we, 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 we can't wait for dad to come and look at the yard and we see that everything is swept up and stuff is put away and everything is like dad would have it. You know, we just want dad to say, oh, you did a good job, right? So we look, we look for that type of affirmation, all right? Children want the blessings of their father we can see, we can see uh, even sometimes in family settings there is competition, if you will. There's competition to see who can get dad's approval. We go for mom's approval as well, but today we're dealing with the father's blessing. Uh, 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 sometimes there's competition, and if I dare say, sometimes there is envy amongst siblings because we strive for dad's approval. Oftentimes, daughters hold dad's heart in their hands. <laughs> uh, okay, I know I'm right. Amen. Oftentimes, daughters, because there, 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 there's something in the human nature that our, we as fathers, we want our sons to be, you know, handle it. You know, we want our sons to scuff their knees and, and walk it off. You know, we want our, we, and sometimes that's a failure in us as fathers because we teach our sons at an early age to deny emotion. And when we teach our sons at an early age to deny emotion, sometimes it shows up in aggression. All right, okay, real quiet. All right. And we seek, generally as humans, we seek affirmation from our fathers. We seek validation from our fathers. We seek recognition from our natural fathers. And if we don't receive that, oftentimes we look for it elsewhere. So perhaps, perhaps, uh, if you survey our young men who are confined in prison, a lot of them, when you, when you get them to themselves and they really open up to you, a lot of them will tell you that I never had the love of a father. 
or I never had the attention of a father. They, they would tell you that my dad was nowhere around, and so uh, I sought the, the validation and the affirmation and the recognition that I was searching for, I found it with the homies. I found it with the gang. They made me feel like somebody. They validated me, although I had to do some things to get in. But once I did what I did, you know, once they jumped me in, you know, then I felt like I had a family. You know, uh, everything was cool. You know, so all the validation, and they gave me a nickname, and, you know, and they, they gave me my gang name, and, and, and that made me feel a part of something because there was something missing. There was something missing. That, so oftentimes for our, for our sons, uh, our, the gang culture is family. Family. Because they didn't get that validation from their fathers. Oftentimes our daughters, our daughters may venture into a promiscuous lifestyle because of the absence of the love and affirmation that they didn't get from their fathers. So they look for it in any male. Did y'all did y'all come to the right place this morning? Yeah, you did. And therein lies the crux of many problems because they never received a father's blessing or they were not aware of a father's blessing. And it sometimes, even like I mentioned, in families, there's strife because of a father's blessing. We can recall how, Jake, how Jacob was blessed above Esau. And that created a problem. And uh, you can find that in the 27th chapter of Genesis. It, the fact that Jacob received the blessing and, and Esau didn't receive the blessing... Uh, that he was expecting. Now, remember, he did sell his birthright, but yet and still, he, he wanted his father's blessing. And the blessing that, that Isaac put on Jacob was the blessing, and Esau was, he was vexed. He, he said even when his father died, he said, I'm, a, I'm going to, you know, let the time of my, mor of my mourning for my father go by, but then I'm killing him. So his mother told him, no, you got to go because your brother wants to kill you. So, so God, uh, God uh, worked even in that situation. And oftentimes, oftentimes, God will give fathers, as well as mothers, but in particular fathers, insight on their children. God will give fathers insight and revelation on the character and the development of the children. So much so that uh, it can often be prophetic. It can often be prophetic. That's why a father's blessing is so important. Remember in the Genesis account in chapter 49 how Jacob, when he knew he was going to depart and transition, he called all 12 of his sons together, right? And he Bless them. And in, and in blessing, he was prophesying about their character and about what was going to happen in their life. So God gives fathers insight, right? He gives fathers insight and direction to actually to be able to speak over and in the life of their children. This is why it's so important, I believe, even, even uh, when the child is in the mother's womb, that words of affirmation be spoken to the child and that, the, and that the child while the mother is carrying I believe it is important that fathers speak to the child so the children will recognize the voice of the father in the womb this is just what I believe and scripture says life and death is in the power of the tongue so speak to your children fathers before they come forth Speak blessings upon your children. Speak affirmations upon your children. All right? 
even uh, some of our Jewish brethren, uh, some of our Jewish brethren and their parents, uh, if you would see them sometimes when we, when we would go to a certain area of town, even with the New Life Academy kids and take them on the little summer uh, events and we would go to that park there in that Fairfax area and you would see the Jewish mothers with their with their children in the strollers and whatnot and they would come and the kids maybe can't even walk yet or can't even talk yet but when they would greet one another some of them would on occasion say this is my son or whatever the son's name or daughter's name and this is so and so's name the doctor the engineer see they were they were in the habit of speaking prophetically what they wanted their children to become. Uh, uh, oftentimes, oftentimes you'll find children, uh, especially if their parents are, are professionals, uh, you'll find children being, being developed and nurtured to, to follow along the lines of their father. Right, you see that. You see that in communities at large, in various communities. Nothing wrong with that. Because you're trying to build, you're trying to build uh, something uh, that I think we as a people uh, should pay attention to somewhat, generational wealth. Yeah, we need to talk about those type of things as well. How, how can we build generational wealth? Amen. We, we want, just using an example, we want, we want more lawyers to come through the, through the Richardson line. We want more lawyers to come through the brown line. So this way, this will, this, will, this, will, this will enhance, if the Lord tarries, generational wealth. We want more professionals uh, to come up through the Henderson line, through the Manchester line, whatever the line, through the Gooden line. We want, we want to enhance that, all right? And in a way, that's a part of you blessing your children, fathers blessing them uh, to have a mind to exceed your level of accomplishment if the Lord tarries, all right? It's, it's in the heart, I believe, it's in the heart of every father, or it should be in the heart of every father, that their children should far exceed them in their accomplishments. And, and the fathers uh, lay down a road map, if you will, that if... The, a road map and a pattern so that the children will be able to follow it. Uh, so so, so Jalen has to exceed you, Brother Richard. That's in your heart. He has to exceed you. So if you, whatever degree you have, he's going to have to at least get, a, get one advanced degree because we don't want our children to just stay, right? So, so uh, Brother Larry, it has to be at least a master's or a PhD for your children. And, and that's the sentiment of a father. I want my children to go far above me. I want the Hall children uh, uh, to far exceed what the Hall parents. I want the Garmer children to far exceed. Put, put your name in the, there, right, right? I want the Whitman children uh, 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 to uh, far exceed in professionalism and, and business ownership. I want, I want I want them to have, a, have an empire, if you will, a good empire, not that one on television, but an empire, all right? That's the heart, that's the heart and mind and focus of our fathers, or at least it should be, or it should be. But oftentimes, oftentimes in, in our search, in our search for affirmation, in our search for validation, in our search for recognition, we go against the plan of God. We go against the plan of God because it doesn't happen like we want it to happen. Sometimes we, 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 don't, want to, we don't want to obey the instructions. And when we don't want to obey the instructions and then uh, um, we start to develop our own ideas about things. We as children, we start to develop our own ideas about things and then we move from the path that our parents, uh, parents have laid out for us, that our fathers have laid out for us. And some of us are real slick with it. Some of us will leave the house, you know, with the pretense that we're going to do exactly what our father has told us to do. But as soon as we get out of the view of our fathers, then we go in the backpack and we put on what we want to put on. 
and we act like we want to act because we're not under the view of our fathers. And we disobey all the things that our fathers has told us that we shouldn't do. And uh, sometimes we get into some serious trouble. That is, the, that is the same type of trouble, if you remember, in the book of Luke where Jesus gives the uh, parable of the prodigal son. Uh, the prodigal son, he, and, and he was a younger son. And he uh, said to his dad, give me all my inheritance now. I, let me have all my stuff and, and, and the audacity of him to claim stuff that wasn't his. Huh? It wasn't his yet. Huh? His dad was still living. So basically what he was saying, you, you, dad, you're dead to me <laughs> because I'm not supposed to get the inheritance until you die. But I want mine now. So now, somebody need to unpack that. What was in that young son's mind to just disregard and disrespect his father and say, give me my stuff now. I want it now. And sometimes that's the mentality of today's generation. We want, we want, uh, we, now I think my stock will go up with fathers today, but it might go down with children, but that's all right. Um, we, want, we want all of our stuff. Right? And it's the stuff that our fathers, that it took them years, 15, 20, 30 years to accumulate, right? And all the while they were accumulating it, we as children, we were receiving the benefits and the blessings of it, but we want what we call our portion, give your minds now. So we don't see the value in it because we didn't have to sweat for it. Some fathers should say amen somewhere. I, I'm trying to help you. Don't worry. You're going to get a blessing. Just hang in there. But this was the idea of the prodigal son. Give me my stuff now. Yeah, I know I got an older brother, but let me have my stuff. So the father said, okay. All right. You want your stuff? Here. He gave it to him, and we know what happened. He went out and had a good time. He partied. He turned up. He did everything. Mm, yes, he did. And all his money and substance was spent. Then he got embarrassed. So he hired himself. He hired himself to a foreigner. And here this Jewish boy was in the pig pen eating what the pigs eat. And we know the scriptural account while he was in that pig pen, he came unto himself and he said, wait a minute, my father got some servants that are doing better than this. So I'm going to get up and I'm going to go back home and I'm going to say to my father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I don't even want to be declared your son. Just treat me as one of the hired servants because my father treats his hired servants good. But there's something in that parable that tells of the love of the father, even though his heart was broken. Scripture says that while his son was a far way off, his father saw him. So that tells me that this broken-hearted father was looking for to return every day. And that further tells me that when we break the heart of God by being disobedient to his word, God is looking for us to return every day. Because he's our father. And we know the biblical account that when his father saw him a far way off, it didn't say that the son ran to him, it said the father ran to him and fell upon his neck and kissed them and hugged them and cried. God, <laughs> he's always open to a repentant heart. He's always open to somebody to say, God, I messed up. I sinned against you. God will run 
and meet you right where you are. It don't matter what you done got into. It don't matter how bad you smell, how, how much the stench of sin has contaminated your whole being. When our Father sees you and have made up, you have made up in your mind, I'm going back to God. Huh? God will be right there. And he, he will receive you with open arms. And he will celebrate the fact that you have come back to him. All right? Now, some may have a, the older brother attitude. So when those who have temporarily walked away from God, when they come to themselves and they make their way back to the congregation, let us not have an older brother attitude. Let us rejoice like the Father rejoiced. All right, now get into what I think is the Father's blessing and how does that relate to us. We remember the Abrahamic covenant in Genesis chapter number 12 uh, that God made unto Israel, I mean unto Abraham. He said, in blessings I'll bless thee. All right? He said, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So God was making a blessing and a declaration to Abraham, who's the father of the faithful. All right? You can look that up in Genesis chapter 12, around verses 1 through 5, maybe a little further. But that's what's known as the Abrahamic covenant. All right? So now, let's move uh, to Galatians. Move to Galatians chapter 3. That's where we want to go. Galatians chapter number 3. All right? Because Galatians, uh, Galatians chapter number 3, it refers back to this blessing. All right? Galatians chapter number 3, verse number 8 in the Amplified Version, here's what it says. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify, declare righteous, put in right standing with himself, the Gentiles, that's us, in consequence of faith, proclaimed the gospel, foretelling the glad tidings of a Savior long beforehand to Abraham in the promise, saying, In you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. So God blessed Abraham. He blessed him. He said, I'll make your name great, right? He said, I'll, he said surely you're going to be a blessing, right? So God here makes a promise. God gives a father's blessing here to Abraham, and because he has stated that in Abraham shall all the families of the earth be blessed, so God was including us in that blessing. You see that? He was including us in that blessing. So now when you move to the 16th verse of this same chapter, it says, now the promise, promises, covenants, agreements, were decreed and made to Abraham and his seed, his offspring, his heir. He, God, does not say unto seeds, descendants, heirs, as if referring to many persons, but unto your seed, your descendant, your heir. So obviously referring to one individual who is none other than Christ the Messiah. So basically what God was saying in your one seed, this promise is to the seed of Abraham. And the seed of Abraham is Jesus Christ. So because of our faith in the gospel message that God preached to Abraham in the Old Testament and God allowed the gospel to continue even unto our time, then when we heard the gospel, when we received the gospel, when we believed the gospel, when we obeyed the gospel, we got into the seed. So, the, so, so that blessing, that blessing of the elder son, that blessing of, that falls upon Jesus as our older brother, right? That blessing uh, that falls upon the one, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So that blessing, so that father's blessing now extends to all who are in Christ Jesus. So we have our father's blessing. We have uh, the blessing that God provided to Abraham and that God provided 
in and through and by Jesus Christ. So the Bible tells us here in this, this same book, in verse number 27, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ, into a spiritual union and communion with Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, have put on, clothe yourself with Christ. There is now no distinction, neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is not male and female, for you all are one in Christ. See, this is the, this is the Father's blessing. See, God understands, and God saw the chart of all of our lives, and all of us were not blessed uh, and benefited to come from a dual parent background. Uh, but... Uh, some of us who came from single parent uh, uh, backgrounds and single parent homes and some of us who had good parents and who had saved parents. Some of us who had parents who were not saved. Yes, and God took all of that into account and it doesn't matter where we come from humanly, but what matters is that God had put a blessing and proclaimed a blessing for Abraham and to Abraham before we ever even got here. And thank God for the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Because of the gospel of Jesus Christ, then we can receive the blessing or a blessing from our Father. God is our Father. How is he our Father? Because when we heard the gospel message, we received it. And we did just like they did or were commanded in the early church. We were born again. This is what Jesus told Nicodemus. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, You've got to be born again, except the man is born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. So when you want to, if you want to see the kingdom of God, Nicodemus, although you are a teacher of the Hebrews and then you are priests and whatnot, but you've got to be born again. Nicodemus asked the question, how in the world can a man be born when he is old? Then Jesus told him, except you're born of the water and of the spirit, you can't even enter, glory, into the kingdom of God. So we, this is a kingdom uh, that you can't join in. Uh, this is a kingdom that you must be born in uh, and you got to repent uh, and be baptized uh, in Jesus name and be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. So once we have uh, obeyed the gospel, then we get in to the family of God uh, and then that very same blessing, I believe this, uh, that very same blessing uh, that God has proclaimed to Abraham, uh, we move right uh, into the blessing. Uh, the blessing was built for us. Uh, the blessing was established uh, for us uh, because he said in verse 28 that there is now no distinction uh, neither Jew nor Greek. Jew, our Jewish brothers uh, nor Greek, Gentile. There is neither slave nor free. So it doesn't matter if you own a business uh, or you're working for one. Uh, there is neither male uh, nor female for you all uh, are one uh, in Christ. I'm so glad uh, that the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, and obeying the gospel makes us one. It matters not uh, of your social status. It matters not uh, of your economic status. It matters not uh, of the geographical location of where you live. You can live in the woods or you can live in the hoods. It really don't matter. All you got to do uh, is listen to, to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, and receive this great promise. Receive a Father's blessing. All of us, when we stand before God, don't we want to hear, well done. Oh, yes, we do. We're striving. We're striving to, or we should be striving to please our Father. Yes, we should be. We want to hear God say, well done. We're striving in our day-to-day -day activities to live up to the blessing that God has bestowed upon us and what is this blessing? The blessing is our hope. The blessing is our confidence. The blessing is our affirmation that we are in the body of Jesus Christ. The blessing is that we get everything that Jesus gets. Glory, hallelujah, because we're heirs of God, the Bible said, and we're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And we have the earnest of our expectation 
We got a little down payment uh, on our inheritance. Uh, when we receive the precious gift uh, of the Holy Ghost, uh, we have uh, an audience with God uh, because he's our father and he can hear uh, our faintest cry. We have an audience. Uh, we always have an inst uh, instant audience uh, with our father. And one of the wonderful things about God uh, being our father is that he don't have favorites. Uh, glory. Hallelujah. Uh, there was a problem with Jacob and Esau. Uh, but uh, we, you, listen, we don't have to be envious uh, of one another as brothers and sisters uh, in the family of God because uh, God ain't got no favorites. Uh, glory. Hallelujah. He'll hear you uh, and he'll hear you. Uh, he'll hear you uh, and he'll hear you. Uh, he'll pay attention uh, to the minutest detail uh, of our life uh, because that's the kind of father that he is. Uh, and he has already commanded a blessing uh, upon us. Uh, see, we have to encourage uh, ourselves uh, in what our God uh, has said. Uh, God has commanded uh, a blessing. Listen, uh, and, if any, and if there's any being uh, in the universe uh, or outside the universe whose commands, uh, whose commands, uh, who not request, God didn't request a blessing upon us. He commanded a blessing. He told Abraham, you're going to be blessed, and I'm going to bless those that bless you. He said, I'm going to curse those that curse you. So listen, we ain't got to defend ourselves from anything because God, our Father, he is our protector. He is our defense. I hear God said in one place, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. So God can fight for us. Listen, when the enemy me, huh? when the enemy will want, will want to bluff us uh, and buster us uh, and kind of just get us uh, in a corner, we can tell that rascal, I'm going to tell my father. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell God huh, on you. In fact, uh, God's here with me right now. <laughs> God, uh, you deal with this because uh, I can't deal with it. It ain't in my job description uh, to deal with this problem. Uh, but my father, uh, he can deal with you, devil, because he made you, devil. Uh, and he has already declared uh, unto his children uh, that no weapon, uh, no weapon formed against me, uh, no weapon formed against you uh, shall prosper. He did not say uh, that the weapon would not be formed. Uh, so let them scheme. Uh, let them plan. Uh, let them them strategize uh, all they want, uh, but I'm under, uh, and you're under, uh, and we're under uh, a Father's blessing, uh, and the Father's blessing says, uh, no weapon uh, that's formed against you shall prosper. My Father's blessing, uh, our Father's blessing says, uh, I'm going to get you uh, to the other side. Uh, our Father's blessing says, uh, ten th a thousand shall fall uh, on one side, uh, and ten thousand uh, on the other side, uh, but only with your eyes shall you see the destruction of the wicked. I'm walking. We're walking. We're living under a Father's blessing. God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. I'm so glad that in my natural state, my father wasn't all that. Yes, no, oh no, he wasn't. But I'm so glad I got a father who won't disown me. Glory, excuse me, while I praise God. Because I didn't have it like some of y'all. My daddy wasn't there. My, my natural daddy was an alcoholic. My, my natural daddy and my mama never got married. Woo, but that's all right. But when I was 25 years old, I got a new daddy. No, I didn't get a daddy. I got a father. Glory, hallelujah. Because there's a difference between a daddy and a father. A daddy can be there just for a brief moment of interaction. But a father will be there when everybody else leaves you. I hear God said in his word, I'll never leave you, neither will I forsake you. Now that's a father. A father will sacrifice. A father will give up everything for the love and for the protection of his children. And that's the kind of father that we have in God. Your Bible said God so loved this world that he gave. That's a sacrifice. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever, look at the arms of God. Uh, look at the magnitude of our God. He said whosoever uh, believes in him uh, should not perish uh, but have uh, everlasting life. Uh, it's not the will uh, of our Heavenly Father that any should perish. Uh, so he pronounced a blessing uh, before we got here. And all you got to do uh, is walk uh, into the blessing. Uh, what a mighty God uh, who established a blessing uh, while uh, we were enemies of God. Uh, he put into practice this. He 
put uh, into manifestation uh, and activation uh, the blessing uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, we were enemies uh, of God. Uh, we were not thinking uh, about God, uh, but yet and still the blessing uh, was already out there. Uh, glory. Hallelujah. I'm so glad God is not like man because uh, if it was us uh, and we messed up uh, the way we messed up uh, and we showed out uh, and showed our butt uh, in God's face, uh, God would have took, if it was us, uh, we would have took back the blessing. Uh, we just said, never mind. Uh, they done made me mad. Uh, never mind. Uh, they, uh, they done abused my kindness. Uh, never mind. Uh, I ain't dying for them. Uh, they don't appreciate nothing I did. Uh, they don't know it was me uh, that saved them from that bullet. Uh, they don't know uh, it was me uh, that saved them uh, from being condemned uh, and consumed uh, by drugs. Uh, they don't know uh, that it was me uh, that saved their life. Uh, but God, uh, who is rich, uh, and grace uh, and his mercy uh, wherewith he loved us uh, while uh, we were cutting our step, uh, while uh, we were doing our own thing, uh, Christ uh, died uh, for us. Uh, what a blessing! Uh, what a blessing! Uh, we didn't know nothing about it uh, until we heard about it. Uh, I'm so glad somebody shared the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ uh, with me. Uh, and that's a part, uh, I believe, of our responsibility to share the gospel to a dying world. So they, so they too uh, can receive uh, a father's blessing. All right, I got to wind this up because uh, hopefully y'all going to take your, your daddies and granddaddies and husbands and them out to eat. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Treat them right. <laughs> amen. Somebody should have said amen. <laughs> Treat them all right. Yeah. Late, I had to buy that one. Y'all should have gave me that one for free. That's all right. Uh, I'm going to move on. Uh, so now, so now, so now, uh, in consideration uh, of the blessings of God, uh, in consideration uh, of the manifold blessings of God, uh, in consideration uh, of the wonderful things uh, that God uh, has done for us uh, before we got saved. Uh, glory. God did some wonderful things for us uh, even before we got saved, uh, before we realized it. Uh, in consideration of that, uh, and in consideration uh, of the wonderful things uh, he has done uh, and he is doing uh, for us. Uh, let us move now uh, to 1 John uh, chapter number 3. Uh, uh, here's what it says uh, in 1 John uh, chapter number 3. See, amplified now, see what an incredible quality of love the Father has given, has shown, and bestowed on us that we, we, glory, hallelujah, we should be permitted to be named and called and counted the children of God. Glory. I've been called some names. I've been cussed out fussed out and run out of certain places. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Ain't been back to Georgia since I left. Uh, and don't want to go back uh, if I don't have to. Uh, Y'all got to read the book to find out what happened. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, we, should be uh, uh, we should be permitted uh, and privileged uh, to be named and called uh, and counted uh, the children of God. What a blessing to be named, to be permitted, to be called a child of God. Glory. That's a blessing. Sometimes we don't value it as we should. Glory. That's God's child. Even the devil recognizes who's God's children. Even the demons recognize who God's children are. Glory. Hallelujah. What a privilege that we are be able to call, we are permitted to be called the children of God. And he said, and so we are, with an exclamation point. That means every blessing, every blessing that God has pronounced on his children, we being his children, we receive it, beloved. Just in case you need some affirmation, just in case the devil will try to send a a depression spirit uh, to you uh, just be, just in case uh, you got a background uh, 
that's similar to mine. Daddy was an alcoholic, grew up on welfare. They, got, they, they, uh, they talked about us, uh, uh, was in foster care, moved around and moved around, talked about us, uh, had worn out clothes uh, and all kind of stuff. Uh, that's all right. Uh, I wouldn't take nothing uh, for my journey now. Uh, it was good. Uh, it was good. You hear what I said? Uh, the things that we went through uh, as children, uh, it was good uh, because it makes me uh, and it helps me uh, to appreciate uh, the mercy uh, and the goodness uh, and the blessings uh, of God. Uh, if God uh, could help uh, a no-count, uh, low-down scoundrel like me, a statistic uh, uh, in foster care, a statistic uh, speech impediment, uh, a statistic in and out of jail, uh, a statistic uh, 13 felonies, uh, a, a statistic uh, alcoholic, uh, a statistic uh, drug addict, uh, a statistic sleeping on the street, uh, a statistic uh, whoremonger. Uh, so if God uh, in his grace uh, allowed a person like me to walk into his blessing that he already declared, uh, surely, uh, surely uh, there's room uh, for everybody under a father's blessing uh, and that father is God. Uh, so the Bible uh, goes on to say, uh, and so we are. <laughs> Glory hallelujah so you can revel in that uh, yes uh, I might not be invited uh, to the who's who uh, of human society but right now uh, even now uh, you are uh, the sons of God uh, that's who you are uh, that's who you really are rejoice in that uh, and don't be ashamed of your identity in him uh, so the Bible goes on to say uh, uh, the reason uh, that the world uh, does not know, does not recognize, acknowledge us, is that it does not know, recognize, and acknowledge him. Don't you dare get caught up in the fervor of fame and recognition. It's not time for the children of God to be on front street. It's not time for the children of God to be made manifest. But the time is coming and it won't be long. So you just stay in the position that God wants you in. Stay under the blessing. He says in verse number two, beloved, we are even here and now God's children see you need to know that so when you're going through you can remind yourself yeah I'm going through but I'm still God's child I'm going through but I'm still living under the blessing of God yeah things look topsy-turvy but one thing they can't move they can't move me they can't pluck me out of the hands of my father so if I'm in since I'm in since we're in the hands of God then the blessing the blessing is still on my life. Oh, yes, it is. I might be down right now, but there's a blessing that has been pronounced over my life. I ain't going to go but too far because there's a blessing that has been declared over my life. I got a destiny to fill. I got a charge to keep, and I got a God to glorify. So now, even right now, we are the sons of God, the children of God. It is not not yet disclosed, uh, made clear uh, what we shall be uh, hereafter. Listen, God got some things uh, that he ain't revealed to us yet. Uh, yeah, uh, I might not look like much to you. Uh, you might not look like much to your colleagues, uh, to your co-workers, uh, to your neighbors or your classmates, uh, but God ain't finished with none of us yet. Uh, glory, hallelujah. God got something in store that's going to blow the minds of the world. Uh, and when he blow their minds, it's going to be too late. Uh, glory. Glory, hallelujah, beloved. We are even here and now the children of God. It is not yet disclosed, made clear what we shall be hereafter. There's some things coming hereafter. Hold on until the hereafter comes. Don't you dare give up. Cast not away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience that after we have done, glory to God, the will of God, we might receive the promise. The hereafter is coming, y'all. It's coming. But we know 
that when he comes, glory, uh, and is manifested, uh, we, uh, glory, we shall, uh, as God's children, uh, resemble uh, uh, and be like him, uh, for we uh, shall see him just as uh, he really is. Uh, oh, we're going to have a coming out party, y'all, uh, when God comes back uh, and when Jesus Christ uh, is manifested, uh, we're going to see him. Uh, glory, glory, glory. We, you, you hear what I said? I said we're going to see him. Uh, we're going to see him uh, just like he is. Uh, and guess what? Uh, not only are we going to see him, uh, we're going to be just like him. Uh, woo, glory. Uh, then the, we won't have to sing uh, to be like Jesus no more. Uh, we're going to be just like him. Uh, that's what the word says. Uh, because uh, of our Father's blessing uh, and uh, I think that last verse uh, says every man, uh, every man, uh, every man uh, that has this hope uh, in himself uh, purify. Woo, glory. So that means uh, since I'm under the blessing, uh, I got to keep my life pure. Don't want to contaminate uh, the blessing. Uh, don't want to do a disservice uh, to the blessing uh, that I'm called to walk in. Uh, so every man, uh, everyone uh, who has this hope, uh, woo, I got a hope, y'all. Anybody else got a hope? Uh, I got a hope uh, of the glorious appearing uh, of our Lord uh, and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, I got a hope uh, that when he cracks the sky, uh, my body, whether it's in the grave or still walking around, I'm going to be changed. Wait a minute. I can't be stingy with it. We going to be changed. Glory. Hallelujah. We going to be changed in a moment. Glory to God. In the twinkling of an eye. That's my hope. And my hope is rested in the, the word of God. So everyone, everyone who has this hope resting on him, what's resting on you? Is it hope? Hope or is it hell? Hope is resting on me cause, because of my Father's blessing. Everyone who has this hope cleanses, purifies. How in the world can I cleanse and purify? I got to wash myself in the Word of God. I got to have my steps ordered in the Word of God. So everyone who has this hope resting on him purifies himself uh, just uh, as he is pure, chaste. Uh, that means I got to keep my body glory. Holly, help me here, God. Uh, I got to keep that. No, wait a minute. It can't be stingy. We got to keep our bodies, y'all. Young and old. Because, just let me hit this right quick. Uh, if you're still breathing, uh, you got your flesh to contend with. Uh, Single flesh. Uh, Married flesh, widowed flesh, flesh is flesh, and put no confidence in it at all. So everyone uh, who has this hope uh, uh, purifies himself, is chaste uh, and undefiled. Uh, I can't walk uh, the way I used to walk uh, because that might defile me. And if I'm defiled, uh, then I'm moving away from my Father's blessing uh, and guiltless. Uh, uh, I got to examine myself. Uh, I ain't got time uh, to follow you around 24-7. Uh, uh, I got to examine myself. Uh, I got a full-time job uh, plus overtime uh, working on me. Uh, so I admonish you uh, to get into the Word of God. Uh, the Word of God uh, can act like a mirror. It can show you all of your flaws. Uh, it won't embarrass you. Uh, it won't put you on blast. Uh, but if you look uh, into the Word of God uh, with a sincere heart uh, and a mind to please God, God will show you all of your shortcomings. Uh, and uh, he'll give you the remedy to fix it. Uh, glory. Hallelujah. Then you can come in here and praise uh, like you really want to praise. I know sometimes you want to come in here and just give God praise, but you got some guilt hanging on the back of your neck. You got some guilt because of the stuff that you done done. You got some guilt, and you can't give God a praise like you really want to, like you really desire to. Get that guilt up off of you and get back under your Father's blessing. It cost him his very life. It cost Jesus everything to give you this blessing so we got to value this blessing and get your mind right with God. Get your heart right with God and walk under this blessing. Listen, I can't get with you. I can't do that. I can't run with you. Why? Because of my father's blessing. He's expecting too much out of me. Because when he comes back, I expect to go with him. 
That's a part of the blessing. It's not just for here. Yes, it does wonders and helps us here if we walk in it. But it's for beyond here as well. So God speaks this blessing. All throughout Scripture, the blessings, blessings, the blessings, the blessings. So why do you live like you do? Because I'm under my Father's blessing. I don't want to jeopardize it. I don't want to, I don't want to give you the wrong impression of my father, of the character and the authority and the holiness of my father. So I have to borrow something from a natural child. I want to be like my daddy. I want to imitate my daddy. I want to imitate my father who's in heaven. So that's who I want to Im imitate because we all, as children, we really do seek the Father's blessing, don't we? And we have it. We have it. He gave it to us. How he wants us to live in it and live up to it. Amen? Amen. So remember this Father's Day, you have a Father's blessing. God bless you in Jesus' name. For those of you who are watching by live stream, we are the Apostolic Faith Home Assembly Church located in Los Angeles, California. We pray that you were blessed by your time with us via live stream. We want to wish again Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. If we live in the Lord will, we'll see you Wednesday at 7 p.m. There is a number on your screen. If you have a prayer request, call the number that's on your screen. We will have prayer counselors standing by for the next 15 minutes, and we will pray with you according to the faith that you have in the word of God. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're here this morning and you need salvation, you need to walk under this blessing. Salvation is here for you. Jesus is here for you. The Holy Ghost is here for you. The blessing is here for you. But you got to make yourself available to it. Just make yourself available to it. That's all. It's, you ain't got to work for it. It's already here. Thank you, Jesus. You, it, God pronounced it before you got here. So all you got to do is walk in it. Just walk in and receive this. So if you're here this morning and you never received salvation, you never repented of your sin, never repented of your sin, never had a change of heart, change of mind, a change of direction, turn the direction of your life from living like you think you want to and turn it to God. Because whether you believe it or not, sometimes we think we're doing our own thing and the devil's pulling mm -hmm. our strings. Because you're going to either serve God or you're going to serve the devil. But sometimes we serve the devil ignorantly because he plays us and makes us think we're doing what we want to do. And it's really what he wants us to do.